Dan 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 dan. It's the Friday night quarantine show. You watch it on your laptop or maybe your phone. We tell jokes and you laugh at home, or maybe you don't. But we'll never know. There's Luke, who's lovely and very mustachy. Josie, who's smiley and lots of laughy. Jory and the Baptists are the best. We all agree. And two to three guests are very high quality. <gasps> The best show on the internet, without a doubt. You might as well watch it. You can't go out. It's the Friday night quarantine show, sponsored by no one. So please give us cash on the thing. I'm not having a breakdown. Yeah. <sighs> oh my god. Let's get ready for crumble. Let's get ready for crumble. Hello. 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 Welcome to the show. And welcome. Um, Johnny is in the background eating crumble. Everybody uh, crumble. Everybody <laughs> crumble. In the foreground eating crumble. crumble. And I'm John McRoberts with no crumble at all. You've just witnessed the new uh, title sequence for the show made by Paddy Jervis. Um, it doesn't have Johnny in it. And I, I don't know whether that's coincidental. I really think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Do you agree, Josie? Mm, I love it. I love it. Mm. Uh, is, Paddy, uh, is Paddy on the screen? Can we all see Paddy? I don't know whether Paddy has been to your home. Hello, Paddy. How Hello, are you? Paddy. Very well, well I, I hope that everyone enjoyed my masterpiece. Mm -hmm. It's so the last thing I'll ever make. <laughs> what I, I would say is you do lots of actors... In that title sequence, yeah, cost of fortune. Right? Were you able to abide by the social distancing rules while making that video? Yes, I, it's actually it's like they did in Lord of the Rings. It's all perspective. I was actually uh -huh. th there's actually about two and a half miles between each puppet. Yes. In each puppet, fantastic, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, mm. I'm pretty good at that stuff, guys. I'm pretty good. And it just goes to show. You think you know the world of showbiz, hmm. but you really don't know looking behind the curtain. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. How are you, How John, are you Luke? John Luke? I'm fine. I'm good, really. You know, I think I've, I've adapted to this oh. scenario. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I'm absolutely thriving, you know? I'd say, uh, <laughs> you've, never looked, you've never looked better. Or yeah. uh, Or worse. Yep. You've stayed the same. <laughs> same for years. I've plateaued. Oh, <laughs> baby, plateau all the way. Um, and how are you, Josie? Not you, Johnny. Oh, you, right, Johnny. Sorry. Oh, right, sorry. You, yeah. I mustn't complain. But nonetheless, fuck everything and everyone. No, no, I'm fine. I'm really fine. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, I can't complain. Um, I tried this afternoon to make a stained glass window with my daughter and what she did was collect up all the little bits of tissue paper that I'd cut up and just fling them everywhere, <laughs> slam them against the window and then leave into the garden, trying to leave the garden into the road. So She has my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need them back because he's not going okay. to be <laughs> elsewhere. And Johnny, how was your day? Do you know what? <laughs> My day has been really lovely. Um, so at the moment, I'm doing the nights um, because our daughter doesn't sleep. What lucky nights, eh? Round yeah. table, is it? Uh, Paul McCartney and... Um, <laughs> 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 a lovely bit of business. Um, no. no, no, no. I'm, I'm, looking after, um, I'm looking after our daughter during the night because she doesn't sleep through. Oh, you should um, pay more attention on her and, and stop running off. <laughs> mm. And We've got um, a weird energy to this, haven't we? Energy to this, haven't we? I'm loving it. Is, it. It's fun though. It's fun. It's 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 interesting. It's it's, it's sexy. Is it sexy? It's, it's sexy. Not sexy no. Oh, mm. well, <laughs> experimental, but we don't know yet. Okay. Sorry. Carry on, Johnny. Yeah, so I'm it. doing the night. So um, I'm a little bit doolally because I'm up all through the night while she's uh, waking me up. I'm trying to sleep train her. Josie uh, is uh, not involved in the process because uh, I did I lost the nights a for a while. I did the nights for a while. Some years ago. Oh, I'll bet you did. <laughs> I don't like this. 
All right, well. <laughs> no, God, no. It's the worst thing in the world. No. Uh, Can we start again? No! <laughs> Trent, play the intro. <laughs> <laughs> so who's on the show today luke wow we've got, we've got us the ones you can see right now hello uh, uh sketch comedy master group um double <laughs> master <laughs> master group Dibblings. and then um to headline we have mark thomas mr mark thomas uh, what a what a delight mm. of a show mm. um, it's like channel four mixed between the future and the past does that make sense? It's a bit Are you saying that there's still a chance for me? Still a chance for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, what that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> um, Johnny Good, well, listen, we were going to go to Johnny in the Baptist. We were going to go to Johnny in the Baptist first, weren't we? Yeah, but, yeah. I don't know. I keep being told off for trying to run the show. You keep being told off for stealing my crumble. I ate a bit of your crumble. <laughs> it's very good crumble. Thank you. I think Johnny and Baptist have put together a Eurovision treat. Um, um, yes, if you're if you're not aware, last weekend was the Isolation Song Contest, so it was the um, it was the anniversary of Eurovision. It was the night Eurovision was meant to take place, and place. and so um, for Turtle Canyon comedy, a number of comics and fun people uh, were were given a country and uh, told to write an entry for the Isolation Song Contest. Uh, um, Patty and myself and Josie uh, to my left here, we ended up with North Macedonia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we wrote the following song that Trent is going to play. It's um, it's a lovely bit of business. Trent, take Wait. it away. Hi, nice to, you, nice to meet you, Keith. I just want to dance. Dance and sing and love and dance and sing and love. Fly like an eagle with a poncho for dance. Keith is the name of my father's friend. I'm lost in a sea of dance and Keith. Wasps, I never liked the way they buzz. Buzz, the second man to land on the moon. Moon is a word that rhymes with balloon. Keith is the name of my father's friend. My father's friend is hitting on me. He has a goatee, he likes to swim. The rings of Saturn shine bright like the sunshine. Did I mention Keith is hitting on me? Egypt. Where the wolves come from? Prawn cocktail. Medusa. And sing and love and Keith has a Honda Fly like an eagle, Keith is outside my house My father has no memory of this friendship with Keith The rings of Jupiter are golden and shaped like rings No fun, no sun, no problem No fun, no sun, no problem Wasps going crazy in their hive of lies Lies might be telling Keith that I'm not at home Home Under Hammer is my favourite show Father says that Keith died in 2004 Sorry, what? My father's friend is hitting on me He smokes a pipe and loves Stephen King I mean, who doesn't? The rings of Neptune are a thing in space Keith has eaten all of the dry roasted nuts No fun no sun, no problem. No fun. No fun. No sun. No problem. No problem. Sorry, where did all these wasps come from? Yeah. And we're back. <coughs> what did you think? So wow, wow, wow. How did it do the competition? How did uh, it look? People can still vote. Ooh. It's it, the, the, so annou- the announce. The announcement is on the twenty third of May. If you go to Iceland, at Isolation Song Contest dot com. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It takes it takes a couple of weeks to get. A couple yeah. of months later, when you <laughs> yeah. I thought it was such a shame that they've just cancelled all this year's songs and it's all new ones next year. And that brilliant Iceland song with oh, the dance is so good, isn't it? Ah, what a shame for everyone yes. involved. Yeah. And it would be a. On Eurovision's um, replication. 
for many years to come. Yeah. Here, here. Um, so you'll be pleased to know there's a helicopter outside. Side. Oh. Do you know what kind? Ambulance, police, army? If it's ambulance, oh. it's fine by me. Just for fun? Maybe it's yeah. just some sightseers. <laughs> a lab copter. Yeah. Um, well, we've, 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 it's time for our first act, I think. Yeah. Yes, it is. Just um, eating some food in the background. No, he's not. He's left it. He's come back. What's he up to? The helicopter seems dangerously close. Dangerously close. As if oh, they are here to victimise streaming comedians. I don't know if they're here for us, but they have just... There's a big light... And a ladder's just come down. <laughs> An awful lot of abseiling we'll going on for a we'll Friday. Do. We'll do an intro for the next act. Oh. We'll uh, have the wonderful next act on. Then we'll come back and see what's happened with the helicopter situation. All right? Okay. Everybody at home, please put your hands together. Because uh, why not? Uh, let Paddy introduce to the stage the brilliant. And there will be an introduction from Paddy first. Know that that's <laughs> well, it's very short. Sure. Start with Paddy first. Siblings! <laughs> Hooray! Fine. You don't need that much. Thank you for the beer. Thanks very much. Pour it. Pour it down. Pour it down over my head. Oh gosh. Shunyam Samyasa. Kuri Kuri Kasa Samyasa. Hello. My name is Gustasa, and my name is Palm Oil Sanyasa. Welcome to the Center of Spirit Healing, online, and the Healing of Spirit, online. Let us open your souls and reach deep into your holes. Yeah, through unique and personal holes, okay? Rooting your feet into the earth and becoming a tree at the Chimnam Samyasa Kurikirikasa Center. Ah. Now let's begin, shall we? Imagine the top of your head being like the blowhole of a whale. Hmm. 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 Yeah? Hmm. Yeah. Yes, breathing through each chakra. No chakra. Hmm. Throat chakra. Hmm. Pelvis. And climb and in and out and in and out and in, yeah. And out and in, I feel it. And out and in and, and out in. And, and, out. In. And, in. and out and in and in and out and in and, 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 and out. And and out. Shin Nam Samyasa, Kuri Kuri Kasa Samyasa. Bokaki, Wasabi, Jelly Baby, Deli Ali. Please, could everyone raise their hands up to sun salutation? Yeah. Please, could yeah. everyone raise their hands upwards to sun salutation? Yeah. yeah. And lowering their hands to an upwards place. Yeah, up to the ground. Lowering your hands up to the to floor. The upwards. I see you. Up to the up. Bring to bring where your, your shoes are. Up there. To a downwards place. Where the floor is. The sky. Go up to the floor. Bringing yourself down to see an where the floor. Where the shoe. Where your shoes the meet the sky. floor. Up. Up upwards to, to the sky. Only gonna sell Shania Twain. We focus here on opening women out and up with their fertility and with men. I don't know. I don't know. We don't normally do men. No. Don't normally do men. Mm. Mm. Branch, branch, tall tree downward. Shakira, Shakira. 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 
I actually do smell a sort of male mm. presence here. Mm. Um, mm. It smells like mm. testosterone. Mm, yeah, it stinks. Sweat. stinks. Mm. Tomato scented sweat. Yeah. Mm. Like the scent of a man. Like a man. From all the men I've been with. It's a tomato y scent. Mm. Scent. Scent. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so we're going to have to deal with this. All um, right. Pig um, boys. Pig boys. Men. Pig, all men and pig boys. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Men. May we have permission to cleanse your souls? Uh, as a collective, yes. As a collective, yes. So if you could... Um, yes, thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, assuming the pose of the warrior, yeah, yeah. Feet, root, root your feet into the ground. Yeah, Peter Crouch. Peter Crouch. Yes, letting your scrotum swing freely yes. in the air. Your pain is your messenger. Listen, listen. Listen to the wind blow. Silence speaks. Palm oil. I believe I'm, I'm feeling a sort of clot in, in, in the collective third chakra. Yeah, yeah, I feel that too, yeah. Mm -hmm. We should probably get it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get this one out. Okay, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Breathing, breathing. Let's get rid of it. It's Enya. I don't know whether you can. It's done. It's done. You're ready. New homo sapiens have arrived. Chumnim samyasa. Kuri kuri kasa. Namaste. We we must we must. I just love as well your little looks at the end, like. <laughs> we are finished. <laughs> He's finished. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. We were going to do a hilarious prank where we pretended we'd been taken off by the helicopter. But we forgot. Yeah, we forgot that. <laughs> but imagine we did it. It would have been hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Want to stop from the siblings there? You can send clap emojis to them on Twitter. Why not? Um, also, we haven't done any admin yet, Josie. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'll, I'll get out of camera. Uh, we have a tip jar. If you fancy giving us a tip for the show, the show we'd love it. It's shared out amongst performers and art centres. Also, we're a great bunch of folks. <laughs> <laughs> and I, did, I didn't realise till today, we're probably not going to be able to do our jobs until at least 2021, maybe later. And we couldn't <laughs> even do them in 2020. Trophy top. <laughs> what I mean by that is I was insinuating that we weren't good comedians, even though we're all very good Okay. <clears throat> I find it quite hurtful, actually. Yeah. Okay. It's been a tough bit of material for us. Um, so please welcome to your screens your next <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't give a damn. Hello. Uh, I'm so thrilled to be having this space to myself. Johnny's going to go off and hopefully get some more crumble. Um, the first thing is, so lockdown is very lonely, and I have been FaceTiming a lot of friends. And I FaceTimed uh, an old friend of mine who I haven't spoken to for years, Sir Paul McCartney. And I uh, don't know why he's laughing about that. Uh, I, but basically, I, I was trying to work out what to do today, obviously, because it's VE day. And, you know, I'm worried about the fact that uh, a kind of perverse uh jingoistic nationalism is taking hold in this country and you know but i do want to honor the victims of war and also sort of honor my grandparents who were caught up in it and had to you know do such frightening and ha have such terrible time so i said to him like uh paul i'd really i'd like to host a street party for ve day where we all sing vera lynn but i don't really know where to do it and he said Oh, that's a good idea. I need to wear in some new shoes. Why don't we do it in the oh, I didn't think about it like that. I'd like to practice my parallel parking. I'm a big fan of tarmac and I'd like to participate in a survey of some kind. I want to try out my new kites, but I'm very shy. Okay, I suppose that makes sense. I'd like to road test my new road bike. Don't interrupt. I'm saying I'd like to road test my new road bike. 
I would like to road test my new road. I'm just worried it's going to break social distancing guidelines or something. It, I, listen, I'd like to road test my new road bike, but I'm worried it's going to break social distancing guidelines. Okay. I would like to bathe my infant daughter. That's not appropriate. I was thinking we could play some scrub. Oh. I just want to. Okay, I'm not going out into the road. Well, the fact is, everyone can see there's 15 flats that are watching over us. And the fact... Anyway, in the end, I just hung up on him because I couldn't be fucked. That's a piece of material I wrote 15 years ago that I jazzed up and changed for today. So don't let anyone say that this hasn't been a productive time for everyone involved. <coughs> if you haven't put on a strong and a half in weight, you're a scab. <laughs> now, <laughs> I shouldn't have eaten. I've never eaten on stage before. Um, um, I know as well, last week I started a very important thread to get us through the rest of lockdown, which was the week in toys. And you'll be pleased to know, you know I've got an update on last week's week in toys. Now, some of you expressed some concern for Daddy Pig, who of course lost an arm last week. He's back. Daddy Pig, you disappeared for three days this week. Everyone was terrified. Could you explain some of your behaviour? I don't have anything to explain. I had a difficult week since losing my arm. Well, that's that. Okay. Um, we also, in terms of losses and disappearances, have had some rather uh, unusual news from the family of horses. You'll be aware of the family of horses. Daddy horse, mummy horse, baby horse and brother horse. Didn't even know she knew brother, but brother horse. Um, they've been quite a tight family unit for this time. Just this afternoon, who should appear from underneath the cushion of her tiny little armchair that she doesn't even fucking use apart from hiding shit under? Sister Horse. Where you been, Sister Horse? You've been lost since the day I unpacked these horses. Well, it's been a very difficult and trying time for me and... Second baby horse. So there we go. I mean, this isn't as well worked out as last week's. What I was also going to do was a debate um, because I'm fully aware that everything needs to be balanced these days and balance needs to be um, notional and false. So I thought um, Daddy Pig has got some very strong views on whether or not we should lift the lockdown and uh, Frog Plug has come on. <laughs> yeah, Frog Plug has come on to oppose. <clears throat> Uh, so I thought we'd have a civilised debate. Daddy Pig, you think the lockdown uh, should be lifted? Oh, yes, I think it should be lifted as soon as possible. I'm an expert, haven't read anything, but I'll tell you something for free. We need to lift it. And lift it now, or the economy will suffer. And if the economy suffers, that could impact me. So, lift it. I'd like to say we also should lift the lockdown now, but on top of that, we should take away all benefits and take away all taxes, and also what we should do is set up some kind of workhouses. So a very balanced and nuanced debate from all <laughs> sectors of the political sphere. <laughs> That's all I've got today. I'm just still trying to work on a joke that I've been working on for two months, which is basically when I buy six wine glasses, I line them all up. And I say, welcome, guys. You're all so welcome, except you. You're going to be out of this place within a week. Let's not lie to ourselves. <laughs> you might as well get smashed now because you're not fucking lasting the week. You, you'll still be here in 20 years when I've had to replace all the others. But you, mate, you're not going to see how. Anyway, that's all I've got. I hope you're enjoying this. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, I'd like to welcome back onto the stream John Luke Roberts, uh, Paddy Jervis, and, of course... Johnny Donahoe. Um, our daughter has started knowing our names. And so when she's like <laughs> vaguely annoyed at us, she'll go, Josie Long! <laughs> or, Where's Johnny Donahoe? Yeah, that's quite Does she ever follow it up with a star rating? <laughs> <laughs> always three. Always three. Always three. Always blooming three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what I liked most about that was one, you got to express um, both of your own opinions 
on the lockdown through the medium of a, of a plug drug and, yeah, <laughs> and, and um, that Johnny was heckling you throughout by loudly eating crumble. <laughs> <laughs> was that audible? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. You, I could hear you scraping every last little tiny bit of <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to say something, and that's that I don't quite understand why our contribution to the show was so vigorously ignored in your critique. That's true. Um, it was I really want to be Brother Horse. <laughs> oh. Brother Horse, Brother Horse, where <laughs> are you? <laughs> that's the new Pixar, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Um, I thought the horses were just unimprovable. Oh, so, I forgot it, to tell you about this. Uh, this is the stupidest thing I've ever bought, which is a big box of these that what my daughter likes to do is open the lid and be like, this is the greatest day of my life! So, what are those? They're squishy balls. Oh, cool. I'd be uh, into that. I'm afraid uh, we can't use that kind of language. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought this should have been called squishy balls. <laughs> Is what you've said about every single thing you read every Shelley Frankenstein set <laughs> Squishy balls you read um yeah and if it, right yeah you play that out it, you, you think never you know Jane Austen sense and sense but I thought it should have been called squishy balls we can do that <laughs> I um I'm, I'm not... a lot more <laughs> <laughs> what would Jane Austen have called her other books they can't all be called balls too I guess, yeah. Uh, Wash your ads. Squelchy bum. And Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> and balls. Colon. The Plomley <laughs> Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there was that great uh, space horror uh, film, uh, Squishy Ball, and then James Cameron's sequel to it, which was, of course, Squishy Balls. Um, and, uh, should we... Um, look, Joseph... <laughs> So much, Luke. <laughs> My favourite bit of the joke was the three or four seconds where you looked up to the left to see if you could you'd thought it through correctly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really, stream, you were looking no. at Mark Thomas's empty stream as if for <laughs> approval to be like, "Help me out here, Mark." <laughs> um, <laughs> um, right, we should probably get on with this. I'd like to introduce onto the stage John Luke Roberts, the absolute treasure that is John Luke Roberts before. Uh, headline act Mark Thomas, the treasure that is Mark Thomas, but before the treasure that is Mark Thomas, the treasure that is John Luke Roberts. Thank you. Um, hello. Uh, well, I, I say hello. I mean, I'm still here. You're you're still here. Okay. You can listen. Um, the, the, right. Uh, uh, the quick fox jumped over the lazy dog contains every single letter in the alphabet. Ah! Contains only one, but does so much more with it. Right, I've written a, um, I've written a drill, uh, which I thought I'd try out. I've written the words for a drill, but for a drill. <clears throat> this is not a drill. This is the, this is not a drill, drill. This is a drill for when we say, this is not a drill, but although we are saying this is not a drill, we do not mean that this is a drill. It, this is not, not a drill. In other words, it is a drill. This is a drill to test what will happen when we tell you this is not a drill. When we say this is not a drill, you need to leave the building in an orderly manner. But although we have just said this is not a drill, we do not need you to leave. This is a drill. This is not a drill. Is not something we mean when we say it now. But when we say it and do mean it, we need you to take it very seriously and treat it as very much a drill. I mean, not a drill. Thank you. Oh, wait, uh, no. This is not a drill. Leave for the love of God. Leave. This is not a drill. Please, God, just get out. Leave. Leave now. This is not a drill. Is not how we will say it. So please bear that in mind and adjust your expectations accordingly. So that is uh, that's the drill that I've um, that I've come up with this week. Um, I thought I'd also. I've been having quite a tough time. Um, uh, uh, it's. I don't know if anyone at home can um, connect to this. 
but it's very hard being in a relationship with an umpa lumpa. They um, they always act so morally superior you know, all the time. Like the other day, it was in you know, a tight circumstance in each other's space, but then the other day, just what was it? They went um, umpa lumpa dumpa di do. What do I see? A towel on the floor. Umpa lumpa dumpa di do. I don't think that's where a towel should go. After a bath, we are all of us wet, so we scrub and we rub until drier we get. Once we are dry, well, we then have a choice. Let the thing air or leave it moist. Hang the fucking towel up. It's not like It's not like <laughs> I don't mean to go on about it. I'll try. We've, we've gone to couples counselling about it, but that's not really good. The, unfortunately, the counsellor was another on Balumpa, and the, so the two of them just sort of gang up on you. The same moves at the same time. Same little rhymes. Balumpa, Lumpa, Dumpa, D, Downdries. And I, know, I mean, they, they, they have been having a hard time with it because obviously um, they lost their job at the factory. The factory closed down. Well, an eleven-year-old might be um, might be good at uh, might, might like the taste of chocolate, but they uh, they've really got no basic business in house. So, uh, right back to the show. I think um, I've been John Luke Roberts. Uh, I'll 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 bring back everybody else. Welcome back Yay! to this. Great job, Luke. Uh, hello. Good. Luke, that uh, was lovely. A wonderful you. set. Um, a little bit of feedback. Yes. Uh, <laughs> during your set, uh, siblings wrote on their feed, Luke, we are crying, <laughs> which I could be taken any way. Yeah. Yes, it could be. <laughs> I think they were crying with laughter. Um, or it's just something unrelated and they wanted to share. <laughs> they just wanted some support. Yeah. <laughs> sadness. They were sadness. crying with sadness. Yeah, they they sadness. sadness. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> yeah. um, well, we're, we're cracking through it, aren't we? Yeah, um, we are. <laughs> well, listen, we've got a fan fantastic headline act. It's true. We're really excited to see him. We could just go straight to him and all have a chat afterwards. Yeah. Why not do that? That seems the best thing to do. Yeah. Uh, then Pat, we'll actually Paddy's be running this often... at a clip in an efficient manner. Yeah. Paddy's got to do his Orinoco flow thing. Oh, thank God. Oh, I'm not doing Orinoco. I've prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Enya is going to be so fucking living, fucking with, this living with this stream. <laughs> he is litigious. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, prepared, I've prepared something to bring on Mark. It's um, yeah, it's one that we all know. We might all have to stand for it, actually. So if Ooh. someone wants to introduce, I'll start playing. Please welcome the introduction to Mark Thomas by Paddy Jervis. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> Mark Thomas. Hello. Hello. In the good sense of the word. <laughs> oh, man, that was possibly the best rendition I have ever heard. Thanks, man. <laughs> that is an absolute pleasure. Now, for everyone who's um, watching, I want to just say that uh, Paddy and the people that I can see on my screen, because they're the most encouraging. And so quite often I'll say, Paddy, Josie, uh, but I mean all of you. I mean all of you. And I just have to say it's lovely to be here because I am in lockdown with my 84-year-old mother who is out over there and she is insane. She is fucking insane. I have been in here for seven weeks. I promise you today she was looking at the telly and they've got all the VE things. and they've got, There we are. And there's Colonel Tom. There's a fly past. And here's someone masturbating over a picture of the firebombing of Dresden to show what a patriot they are and all that kind of malarkey. And my mum's just sitting there. And she just, even she just went, well, this is shit. 
this is utter shit, isn't it? They just keep going on and on about it. Like All they do is patronise pensioners, which I think is true. If you turn on the BBC, today has just been full of people going, oh, you fought in the battle, didn't you? You were wonderful. You were airdropped into Normandy and you killed 50 Germans with your bare hands. And look at you, still sitting up. Just want to fucking kill these BBC fucking wankers. And the other day, I don't know if you saw this, fucking Eamon Holmes, you know that fucking weird fat tub of lard sitting there next to this fucking piece of botulism in a wig, right? He's, he's sitting there and they're doing a thing about the G4, uh, the, the G5 masks, right? Uh, I, I, I call it G4, I've let it slip, I'm really a lizard person. The G5 mask. Right, they were doing a thing about conspiracy theories, and somebody debunks it. And Eamon Holmes goes, "Well, that's just one side of the story. That's the story the mainstream media put for." And you should go, Eamon, you are the fucking mainstream media. You're not Infowars. It's fucking I don't know, breakfast morning with coffee with cunts. I don't know what you call it, but you are the mainstream media. That's what you are. It's not a case of. And after the break, we'll have the weather with Alex Jones and David Eichel talk us through his 9/11. The Jews did it knitwear. It's just, I'm slightly, uh, uh, t t just because my mum is the rudest woman in the world, right? She is the rudest woman in the world. Before that, she lives around the corner from me, right? So before the lockdown, one day I walked in, I'm, I'm her carer, right? I walk in to do the cleaning and all of this kind of stuff. I walk into the flat door. She literally says, this is a quote, and here's a list of things I don't like about you. And that was her literal beginning. <laughs> and she just ran through a whole list of things and finished with the words, and you bring out the worst in me. <laughs> so it's just like, this is, it's this weird, weird world. Because once I came here, uh, it was on a Sunday and she opened the door and just went, what do you want? I said, I'm here to cook the Sunday lunch. Another one. And it was just like, I promise you, she's just the grumpiest person. It's like being in a Beckett play, being in lockdown with my mum. It's like, because I get up in the morning and I wander through and I'm just wearing sort of like boxer shorts and T-shirt. And she's sitting there in her chair and I go, morning. And she goes, morning. How are you feeling? Better in health than temper. Your health is shit, mum. Yeah. And then we slide into a pincer and don't speak for an hour. And it's just this absolute madness. I am 57 years old, right? And I cook for my mum, I clean for my mum, I do all the washing, I do. it's laundry day today, so I've changed the sheets, da 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 Once I cooked a cauliflower cheese. Now, it's no great thing, but I did it from scratch and it was really nice. I put it down on the table, I serve it up. She takes a bite of it, I take a bite of it. I say, well, I'm quite pleased with this. And she says, you wouldn't want it every night, would you? She's just the grumpiest woman in the world. I absolutely promise you. And she tells me off because she's 57. Because I'm 56. She's, she's 84. And, and she was, as I walked past her, I said, is there anything you want? You know I do. And she hit me with a walking stick. <laughs> I'm an adult. What are you doing to me? And she tells me, if you don't finish that off, I'm going to be really cruel. I'm being told to eat my greens. I'm 57. I can't take this anymore. It's utter insanity. The other day, this is all true, right? I'm just, everything I've told you is true, right? The other day, I was, she was by the dishwasher and she dropped something. She's got trouble picking things up and all that. So I go, I'll get it. I bend down. And I say, bend down. As I get ass height, she farts. She farts in my this is an 84 year old woman and I said you planned that and she went oh, I did and then shuffles off this is just uh, I, I, I can't I mean I can't begin to tell you how insane it is um we actually had um we had to have that conversation where you just sit down and you just because she does this whole thing where she'll just so it's all the same in it the news so what do you mean it's all the same so you, you've had it on all day. Yeah, but they don't change it. Well, Mum, they, they, they can't change it for you, love. Or can't they? No. Do you expect different? Yes. <laughs> so the, that's, that's the level you're dealing with. So we had this conversation with her the other day. And I had a conversation and said, look, Mum, if you do go into hospital and you get COVID-19, 
the chances are it will finish you off. She goes, well, when, I'm, when it's my time, it's my time. I said, okay, but we need to have a conversation. Now, m- my mum, when she moved into this flat, she goes, I want a word with you. Here's my do not resuscitate letter. Don't muck me about. Right. So she's really open about it. She's an ex nurse. And so, <laughs> said, right. so I walk in and said, look, we need to talk about whether you go to the hospital. I don't want to go to the hospital. I said, I know you don't, but you might have to go in just to be checked over so they can examine you and give you the drugs that you need and then send you home so that you'll be able to see your time out with your family and with the drugs. And my mum said exactly what I knew she'd say. She go, I'm allergic to opiates. <laughs> See, I'm allergic to opiates. It's like, Mum, right, this is an end of life scenario. It's not going to worry about whether fucking, you know, morphine brings you out in a rash. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm allergic to opiates. So I don't fucking care. It's end of life. I'm not going to wander around South London trying to get gluten free heroin. It's just insanity that I'm living in. It's utter fucking insanity. Anyway, I'm better now. Um, <laughs> The thing is, oh, I have to tell you this one other story about her, right? I took her to the West End, right? This is this is before the lockdown. I took her to the West End, and we're coming back. She's had this lovely evening. It's the first time she's been out to the theatre since my dad died, and it was really brilliant. And we're driving through central London, and she looks at the National Portrait Gallery and says, Do you know, in all my time living in London, I've never been there. And I said, well, if you like, I can arrange a trip where we could go and see it together and she said just because i said i'd never been there don't mean i fucking want to go unbelievable so i'm really glad you've invited me because basically i am uh, enlisting you as um well witnesses for the defense um so that you will come on as character witnesses and share now here's another few things that have Boris Johnson, everybody. Boris Johnson. <laughs> Brilliant. Can I ask, how long have I got, by the way? I don't know how long I've, I've oh, been going. Oh, you've easily got another five minutes if you want. And okay. if you don't, whatever you prefer. It might be longer. It might be longer. Because Boris Johnson, right, <laughs> at the beginning of all of this, he stood there on a that thing and go, many of you are going to lose loved ones. And that's what he said. That's what he said. Many of you are going to lose loved ones. And then he sort of waltzed off. And you just sort of think, hang on a minute, what do you mean hey, many of you are going to lose loved ones? If this had been Jeremy Corbyn who'd been standing there saying that, the front page of the Daily Mail would be a picture of Corbyn putting a cushion over your grand's face. But because it's bloody Boris Johnson, oh, Boris, he's such a car. And you look at these people, I have no fucking faith in every single fucking one of them. Boris Johnson goes missing for five you've COPA meetings to plan the emergency and you just think oh for god's sake you can't just wander off because you want to shag or you're bored or because you've got a puzzle to do this is for, you, churchill didn't fuck off for five meetings before operation overlord he's like oh fuck it'll be all right i'm off for a brandy so the thing about these people and especially all the people at the death meeting that they have every day where they just have it's just like the mantra of death here are the figures of death and then uh, Rob, Dominic Rob, he looks like he's just hidden a body. He just looks like he's just sort of stuffed one behind a curtain or something. And Hancock, is, he's got that look of they're going to blame the intern. He's just, because he's only 12. Matt Hancock is only 12 years old. The only reason the police let him into Downing Street is because they think he's one of Boris Johnson's kids. This is, this world that we're living in is fucking insane. And all of them, this is, this is, because I reckon people look at our country and just go, this is a joke country. And we are a joke country. There's no, like all the people in charge go sick at the same time. So the prime minister, the chief medical officer, the health secretary, the bloke, they all go sick with COVID at the same time. And, you know, because Johnson, I'm merrily shaking hands. And you think even in the fucking plague, the king didn't walk around and go, well, I still lick rats. You just think this is fucking insanity, you fucking idiot. Because I'll tell you why. There's a group called the Chesham Doggers. They are what they say. That's from dogging, right? And they have a social media presence, right? And they said that we are, this is a month before the lockdown. We are ceasing activities because of the coronavirus, right? right? The fucking doggers. The fucking <laughs> doggers! <laughs> the fucking scientific mouse of the Prime Minister! <laughs> doggers! Fuck it! These are people who regard safe sex as putting the fucking handbrake on! Doggers! 
fuck's sake, people, <laughs> if they lift their tartan travel rug up and you put it under a UV light, it will blind you. The glare will take your eyes out. These people have got more scientific nows than the Prime Minister. Doggers. The irony there being that they could actually practice quite a safe, distant dogging through the car windows. Not if they had the window open. <laughs> <laughs> The point being is, all of these people, ISIS, right, this is a month before the lockdown, ISIS banned jihadis from travelling to Europe. Fucking ISIS. Somewhere in the cave, there's a Zahari lookalike staring at a video camera going, well, we're just following the science. And the important thing is that we don't risk anyone who is a jihadi brethren. We don't put them in harm's way. And you should, you should think, ISIS, this is fucking nuts. Then, right, because they've not prepared for this, Hancock and Hunt, right, th th there was a report in Channel 4 about how the amount of PPE that they had in stockpile not only wasn't sufficient, but what they had, 45% of it was out of date, some of it by decades. And you just think this is, we're living in an era of madness. There is a, a, a medical fetish site called MedFet. I know this through research. You can look at my browser history. It's just not one of my things. But MedFet, quite early on, donated all their PPE to the NHS because there wasn't enough. The NHS, and with all respect to MedFet, the NHS is reliant on people who have day wear butt plugs. That is who they are reliant on. This is the stuff. We're a joke nation. That's what we are. We are a joke nation. No one gets tested at the airport. All these people coming in, we can't even have a bloke with a gun, just temperature thing, pointing at someone's head because we're a joke. Now, we could probably have a log flume if the Prime Minister wanted it, but no. You just think this is it's just absolutely madness. Then, here's the other fucking thing. Because Hancock got right, you've got no PPE at the care homes, uh, which are essentially, the care homes are essentially COVID-19's Magaluf, right? That's what it is. And, you know, here we are on this day when we're supposed to honour the greatest generation. And what do we do? We shove them in care homes, forget all about them, and let them die. That's what we have done. And it's an utter disgrace. And, and then they've got to put up with, you know, Holly and uh, what is his name? That Schofield fella, you know, sitting gurneying on the sofa, making bunt cake in the fucking colours of the Union Jack. And Pat, you know, the point I'm making is we need global revolution. Uh, I'm also saying, right, because what they've got is Hancock had this thing. Because right, when, when it started all... Um, Johnson had his whole herd immunity and said, we're not going to do testing. No, 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 not testing. Whoa, not a test. That's for girly swats. Oh, I know no revision. And you suddenly, you know, suddenly it just, we got the worst death rate in Europe. And, and you look at this whole thing about the testing and Hancock suddenly goes, I'll do 100,000 te tests in a day. And it's like, Matt, it's not just one day. You have to get to that point and then keep them going. It doesn't count as the truth just because, I oh, know, I only said a day, a day. It doesn't count as the truth of that. And basically, they were just fudging the figures. So anyone's fucking says they send some tests to people at home and they count that as conducting a test. Somebody, there's some poor dog owner in Canterbury, got sent a worming kit and they're included on the fucking figures. So all of this is just this manic fiasco. And in the middle of it, you've got Branson and all these people going, oh, I'd like some more money, please. I'd like some money, please. Because Branson essentially is a billionaire beggar, right? He is a Pilates fucking uh, just plutocrat ponce. That's what he is, right? And he's a beggar. And all these fuckers go, do you know what they're doing now for testing? Did you see this thing, right? They said that actually the people who've been doing the testing, some of the testing, are Deloitte. They're accountants, they're an accounting firm. Deloitte. You go in for a COVID test, you come out with a small offshore bank account. Deloitte have been doing the test. And now they said that Serco were in the running to do the tests. And Serco, who got done for corruption and falsifying Ooh. fraud, right? And G4S are going to fucking be in the big. No! No! Uh. This is insanity. I would rather they did the tests at KFC. That's what I would rather happen. Fucking Serco. I would rather Chris Grayling did the fucking test. 
this is the world that we are living in, my people. This is the world that we are living in. And the one thing I have learned, right, the one thing I have learned is that if anyone calls you an angel or a hero in England, run. Run. Because you are expendable and you are going to die. You are the third person to be seen in a horror film. Run. Because if someone calls you an angel, it means they haven't got the stuff you need to do your job. Run. And in fact, if you work at a nuclear plant and somebody calls you a hero, run screaming so we can all hear. Stay safe. <laughs> that was mega. That was mega. Master class. Master class. <laughs> I can't say that I agree with politics, but well, I do like the <laughs> I know you love, love the swearing, swearing don't, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> do you know I'm here for the character? It's a funny character. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, I've, I've actually I've, I learned from Ben Kingsley in Sexy Beast. <laughs> Where I know. <laughs> and now speaking for the defence we have John Luke Roberts take away <laughs> uh, unprecedented uh... <laughs> <laughs> God, there we go that was lovely <laughs> oh, Mark, that was... Thank oh, you so much. Stay on the line. We shall, we shall chat, chat, at chat at the end. See you at the end. Well, we'll see you for the after party. <laughs> um, when I was a teenager, as part of our personal and social education, <laughs> we got to go to Bromley Magistrates Court. And I'll never forget seeing a barrister who was defending this really sweet young guy oh. who'd um, used a drill to fiddle his meter. And, like, we all sounded like we're from Bromley. And the barrister, obviously, was not from Bromley. And the barrister <laughs> came out and went, Oh, my client, of course, was blow in both mood and funds. <laughs> <laughs> I've never forgotten it as a defence. Like, this guy, like, so, oh, you know, plucked from the highest echelons <laughs> coming down to defend the, the, the drill electric meter guy. My client was low in both mood and funds. <laughs> I was put on trial a few years ago for uh, chaining myself to the underside of a bus full of arms dealers. <laughs> um, I, I was charged with criminal damage. Um, and I was really annoyed because we didn't do it. I, I was happy to get arrested and charged for what we'd done. If there was a law that said you've chained yourself to a bus and you're an idiot, fine. Right? But they charged us with criminal damage. And the, what was lovely was the p one police officer in the dot who was giving evidence told the truth. And he got his notes out. And he was literally reading from his notes. He, and we're all sitting there opposite him. Yeah. And you feel empathy because they're kind of like, that he's nervous. Yeah, Do you know probably. what I mean? And you feel that kind of empathy of nervousness in the formality of it all. And he said, I, I, I looked under the coach and the vehicle and I saw the defendants, which are now sat opposite me in the room here. And then he turns his thing over I said to them, come out. No, they said. <laughs> I then inquired how long they intended to remain under said vehicle, and they replied indefinitely. I then said, who was the ringleader or the organiser? To which they replied, I'm Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> and we had forgotten all about that. We are just sitting in the corner just going, oh, I forgot that was a great line. <laughs> <laughs> well, we absolutely loved it. Um, thank you for what? articulating with um, justified rage the yeah. madness of our current situation. Yeah. Um, oh, my situation of being with my mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for the phrase better in health than... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Better than health and in temper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it, uh, it's remarkable. And the great thing is, is she, she denies, denies swearing. swearing. Right. I sent out a tweet once just describing the swear words she used while watching a weather girl, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I read it out to her and she just went, I don't swear. I don't swear at all. You're the only one that makes me fucking swear. <laughs> 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 oh. yeah. She is brilliant. Her swearing is absolutely brilliant. And she is. So she'll just sit there talking about all her mates, all her old biddies, they phone each other up. Yeah. 
And she just, and it's amazing because she's like, she's 13. She'll put the phone down to one and pick the phone up to another. And go, I've just spoke to her. You'll never guess what she's after now. <laughs> <laughs> she's been she's been on the phone to the community help saying she'd like a bit of cake. Well, all the yummy mummies are bringing stuff around to her. Right, we're gonna have a little song. Oh, I'll get my guitar. Say again. Thank, thank, thank you for having me. Oh thank my you, god, it's a pleasure. Thank Don't you. hang up. Don't yeah. hang up. Lovely to see you. You two don't hang up. We're going to have a little song. And um, we should also say we do have a tip jar and um, it, we'd be very grateful and glad if you would consider. But Please help us out. We're not going back to work for at least a year, it seems. <laughs> and we want to. <laughs> um, also, um, there are many science shamble shows over the weekend on this very same platform. And we are not doing our show next Friday because next Sunday is under the sea shambles, which was due to be at the Royal Albert Hall. I'm going to Obviously, that's slightly too large. So now, if you want to know about it, wait there. Yep. Uh, uh, I've got the list. Robin Ince, um, Helen Chersky, Helen Chersky, Steve Bla Batchel, Batchel, Josie, wow. Cobby Smulders from the Avengers, Brian Cox, Grace Petrie, Rufus Hound, Reese Shearsmith, David McCalmont, Doc Brown, and 30 more people. And also, if you're interested, me and Robin Ince have been doing a daily show every weekday for the past eight weeks. And next week, we've got our last kind of, yeah, probably our last week of doing daily shows. And we've got all kinds of really great guests on. So, and that's at 10am. Mark, unmute if you want to speak. Unmute. You've got to unmute, Mark. <laughs> What's that, love? Yeah, it's, the, it's the big button. But they can't. You make me fucking swear you do. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, thing I was going to say is, look, we are going to be out of work for a long time. And um, if anyone sees me in B&Q, please don't say, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I had people like, my husband said you're famous, but I think he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which I'm like, you're right. <laughs> you show online, aren't you? Oh, and I'm also performing my show on Sunday night, 8.30. Tender. If you, it's called Tender, and I'm just performing my stand-up show as as if I'm touring it every Thursday and Sunday night, 8.30 to 10.30 BST, on this or on my Twitch stream. And you can see mine and Paddy's new show, which is called Johnny and the Baptist, The Cruise, which is on Wednesday, also on Josie's stream. And every day we're doing a podcast about mental health, which is available on iTunes, Spotify, and Podbean. Does anyone else like crisps? Walkers do a number of different <laughs> 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 Sorry, Mark, what Mark, did you want to say? Uh, yeah, I am doing um, uh, a streaming of my Bravo Figaro show. <laughs> oh, I love that show. And, uh, the and most incredible show, everyone. The most live incredible show YouTube. and live Q&A at the end of it. Where he lies about loving his mum. <laughs> I know, I do Beautiful love her. Stuff about I love do. Mate, seriously, when I finish this, I'm going to be going to take her a cup of tea and a hot water bottle. Oh. Mark, where can we watch the stream? <laughs> uh, Mark, where can we watch the stream of Bravo Figure on, on Go Faster Strike. Lovely. Uh, and when is when will it be? Thursday night. And oh, also, trying to compete with this guy. <laughs> Sorry. Why are you taking my audience with your beautiful show? <laughs> huh? Um... Well, we planned it purposefully because you didn't give me any of your fucking rhubarb crumble. <laughs> you just want to split the left. <laughs> split the left. I, 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 am the Nick, I am the Nick Cohen of the comedy circuit. <laughs> God. No, you're not. <laughs> well, um, okay, we're going to wrap it up and call it a day. It's been lovely. Thank you to siblings who were so wonderful at the top of the show. Thank you to John Dick Roberts, the most incredible, prolific joke writer of our generation. What are you saying, John Luke? No, it's not me. Um, what, should we finish on a song? We can oh, finish yeah. on a song. Uh, it's been a lovely show. Thank you so much. Uh, we're we're going to finish with a short song uh, because uh, we've run um, about as over as we always do. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Paddy, are you there? Are you ready? Yeah, man. Let's let's hit it. A one, a five, a one, two, one, five, three, two, four. nine. <laughs> <laughs> Time. <laughs> 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 la la 
la la la la. This is fucking silly. What the delay is. Terrible face, you've got a 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 horrible face, you've got a horrible face, you've got a horrible face. But you're rich. Is the end of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. We're not back next week. We'll be here in two weeks' time. Josie, have you had fun? I've had a lovely time. Paddy, <laughs> have you had fun? I've had a lovely time. Thank you for having me. Nice time. Oh, yes. <laughs> and this is the point where we're going to ask everyone who's still following the stream individually if they've had a nice time. Legs 57 2005. <laughs> have you had a nice time? <laughs> Cat stand four. Have you had a nice time? <laughs> Jeff Tremby Snatch. Have you had a <laughs> Can you <laughs> <laughs> with five hundred names? Okay, we're doing